Morning everyone, Nick from Meat Smoke Fire here. A week till Christmas, less than a week till Christmas. Oh, exciting. Um, sorry if you can hear lots of noise. Uh, our village has decided that this is the week to do all the road repairs and everything. So um, we're not a particularly big village, but we have nine sets of road repairs going on, apparently. Um, so they're drilling and banging and doing whatever. So anyway, apologies for that. It is also quite breezy. So we've tried to reduce the wind noise with a bit of sock on the, over the microphone, and I do mean sock. Um, but while it's wet on the floor, it's sunny. So um, yeah, it rained this morning and it got it out of the way before the class. So somebody is, you know, wanting to have a good class today. So we've got three cooks. I haven't advertised what they are. So um, they're all nibbly stuff for Christmas, but, which I think we said before. Um, I haven't shot any photos, I haven't written up the recipes, but they're all pretty simple, so I will do that, uh, and hopefully you'll enjoy them. So we are going to show you who's here today. <laughs> she says. <Hi. laughs> We've got Helena on camera today and nobody else. So look, there's the sun, there's a lovely blue sky. Anyway, so nobody else today, so I'll pass you back to Helena. Um, I don't even know if Andy's on the, yes, she oh, she's on the feed. Morning, Andrea. Um, so yeah, so there'll be no, no typing of questions unless Andrea does it. Andrea has offered remote support again. Perfect, perfect. Bear with her, she doesn't know a huge amount about the eggs. Anyway, so let's crack on. So three dishes today. We are gonna do some chicken wings, um, but make them a bit different. We're gonna do some Thai style chicken wings. Uh, nice and spicy, bit of fish sauce in there, bit of lemongrass, uh, lots of chili, uh, and a nice sticky peanutty sauce. So it's a good job Andrea's not here because she hates peanuts. Um, so um, she won't miss out. Uh, we are going to do our, Helena makes them every year for Christmas. We have them every year on Christmas morning or Christmas lunch our salmon basket. So we're gonna use some smoked salmon and I showed you how to smoke salmon a few weeks ago. Um, I'll recap on that. So we're gonna use the smoked salmon that we made and we're gonna do some lovely baskets with a, a horseradish sauce in them, delicious. And then the last cook we're gonna do, um, everybody loves, let's grab them, pop over. I know it's all your favorites, sprouts right next to the sprout Christmas tree. Um, the lights aren't, they are on, but they're not very bright. Um, so there you go, some sprouts, some chopped sprouts. Um, we're gonna do sprout pakoras. So a bit like onion barges, but just with sprouts. You don't have to be so far away to you, you can get me, you can zoom in now, it's only on the beginning bit. So people need to be out of here. Right, so let's get going. We're gonna go on and I'll show you what we're gonna do on the chicken wing. So we're over on this end. We haven't used this egg in ages. So I thought I'd fire it up. We've got the extra large. Um, I've got a convector in there. Um, that's it, just convector, normal stainless steel grid. So we're going for an indirect cook. And what we have are, and this may, I don't know how, I haven't done this before. We've got some um, chicken wings and they've been marinating overnight in sriracha, fish sauce, uh, some sugar, and I think that's about it. And some water, I think. I can't remember now. All I'm gonna do, I want them to crisp up a bit. So um, this is gonna get messy. So I'm gonna drop a few of them in. This is gonna take me a little while. In fact, I'm just gonna get messy straight off. Let's put that down, hands in. We're gonna cover them in a bit of corn flour. Pat them off. And then we'll just pop them on here. Uh, the idea of the corn flour is it just crisps them up. Um, so you could deep fry these, that would work. Um, but we're just going to cook them indirectly a bit, you know. It'll taste a little bit different. And the corn flour will crisp up. I've got a little bit much on there. Never mind. Let's get a few more on. I might not do all of these, just in the interest of time. Um, make sure when you're putting them on there, just get them over the um, convector, the plate setter. In fact, there's not many left now. Um, I've got this egg set at about uh, 180 to 200 degrees, somewhere around there. Don't be too, look at me making a mess. 
Um, don't be too precious with temperatures. Don't worry about it too much. Ooh, stick a bit more sauce on those. Um, yeah, 180, 200, fine. Don't worry if it's a, a little bit. 20 degrees either way, I always say is great. So Franco has asked, would that work in the rotisserie basket? That would, but it will get quite gooey in there, Franco. So yes, it would. I did consider doing it on the rotisserie, but I thought you'd all be sick of me using the rotisserie. Um, so I didn't do that. Right, I'm gonna shut that down and give my hands a wash. So yeah, would work on the rotisserie. Um, you could also do them in the wok on the expander system. You know, I'm a great lover of the wok and cooking. I always say it's the, it's the safest place to be using um, a deep fat fryer is your egg because you can shut the lid. Um, any issues, just shut that lid and off you go. So, yeah. Look, treat myself. New brick green egg towels. Whew. That's how we rock, rock and roll around here. <laughs> right, I'll put on my apron. Otherwise I'm gonna get filthy. So those are gonna take about 25, 30 minutes. So. Andrea, can you set a timer for 25 minutes, please? Thank you. <laughs> oh, of course, yeah. Um, so look, I've got, an I've got one on my apron as well. If you want one of these aprons for Christmas, unlucky, we sold out. No, we've got the extra large left, but we sold out of these ones. Um, so unfortunately, unfortunately. Um, right, let's get on to Helena's um, favorite recipe. Um, we talked about the smoked salmon, so let's open this up and show you what it looks like. Uh, so I just backpack it once it's cured. So this is a side of beautiful smoked salmon. I'll put it there in, fr in the front. Um, well, this is actually sea trout, pretty much the same thing. Um, so the way we've cured it, we've uh, put it in salt and sugar, 50-50%, 50-50 mix. And that was cured for um, six hours. So you put it underneath, over the top, let it draw out the moisture. Once you've done that, you can then, um, uh, you can then uh, wash off the salt mixture, put it on a rack and put it in your fridge overnight, uncovered. It will then go sticky and then you can smoke it and we'll go and have a look at that in a minute, but we need to crack on with the other stuff. So um, I'll just show you what it is. Little bits of chef treats. Do that, I? Anyway, right, so this is super easy. And nobody ever believes it when they eat this, what's in it. So, um, lovely supermarket, um, excuse me, my nose running. Supermarket white bread, medium sliced, and a rolling pin. So just get in there, roll it flat, I'm going to do it both ways. Kids would love this. Didn't I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, I used to get the dough and uh, uh, you just squash it and squash it and squash it till it's hard and then eat it. Um, so yeah, just roll it flat and then get a 10 centimeter, four inch cutter. I've got a bit of fennel in there from the salmon. This is a fennel cured one. Cut it like that. Perfect. Right, that can go in my bin. Need my oil, which is here. Right, so I'm just then get a little bit of olive oil in our in our uh, bowl. And here are some I made earlier. And all we're going to do with these is just give them a little baste both sides don't you know not too much do them on the plate in fact because then it won't make the board dirty okay. uh, so mark from smoke fine food said sometime you could tell us about the dish you have to cure the whole side of salmon in something long enough the dish um oh yeah so um they always say you need a non-reactive um dish to cure the salmon in um i use a baking tin um one that's got um non-stick on it non-stick doesn't react can you see what i'm doing here helena oh, yeah, sorry. yeah you just push them into the tin so i'm just using like a, a muffin tin or a, a yorkshire pudding tin 
Um, so yeah, I cure it just in a, a look in a. I know you're not supposed to do it in a metal tin, but it's never done me any harm. Um, so we're gonna, only going to make six of these today because there's only two of us here. So I'll just finish coating these. But yeah, something like uh, um, just a baking tin, uh, a roasting tin that's got non-stick on, because then it's not the metal. What you're worrying about is aluminium and those sorts of things. When it gets in with the salt, it will react with the salt. Um, so it's a bit like, you know, the pots and pans you're not allowed to put in your dishwasher, it's because there's, you know, there's so much salt in there um, and it will start to react with the salt and it will basically just corrode your pants. So anyway, one more. So any other questions? Uh, no, not, not yet. Right. right, how many have we got on today? Uh, we've got about 20 odd people at the moment. Cool. So uh, Franco's on, cool. Mum's yeah. on, Andrea's on. Um, All family then, 20 no. family. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Brindley, Wendy, Karen. Bill Gardner. Morning, Bill. Oh, Bill, thank you so much. And uh, so Bill um, Gardner, Barbecue Bill, some of you will know him as on the forum, um, starting up his own charcuterie business uh, called North Charcuterie, based, based down in Kent, down in the south. Where did North come from? It must be North Kent or something. I have never asked him that. Um, he sent me a sample pack. I haven't opened it yet. Well, I have opened it. I've seen what's in it. Um, but yeah, I've got a few samples of his first production. So really excited to try those, uh, but haven't done yet. We'll do in the next couple of days and I'll post about that. But yeah, Bill uh, is opening up um, this new business. So again, another one to support, another one of the crowd that we you know, love. Um, Bill unfortunately cooks on a Kamado Joe. So uh, yeah, we don't talk to him about that. Uh, he used to have a big green egg. And that's all I need to say really. Anyway. Oh, so Bill's from the north. That's ah, nice okay, you. of course, yeah. Right, so I've got my six in there. We could do a dozen. Um, this egg is set at, and I'm, I'm using the Egg Genius again. Um, so I've got it set at 180 at grid level. So you'll see on here, it's 160 at egg, temp, um, egg level. Does that make sense? So um, for those of you again doing the cakes, we did, I didn't check that actually fitted in there. So these are going in. Uh, and these will need 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. Another one for you, Andrea. So we'll get that in there. Right. Excellent. Um, so uh, that one is, I've got the plate set or the convector feet up. I've got a grid on top and I've got a baking stone on there. So a typical baking thing set up. The baking stone is there to protect those, the, uh, protect the bottoms of those um, uh, uh, bread baskets. Uh, just as we did last week, but I have preheated that one. Last week we used the baking stone cold to protect the bottom of the um, the loaf that was already cooked while we when, while we melted the camembert in it. So um, yeah, right. This egg. Uh, we've got this set up. Oh, it's lovely and warm. Um, we've got this set up with a wok. Um, so you've seen me do this before. I've got a wok sitting in there above the charcoal. If you looked at that. It was reading about 130 degrees and you can see it's too hot. It's 210 degrees on the thermometer. Okay, so I need to turn this down before we start making these pourers. Um, so I'll turn it down a bit there, turn it down a bit at the bottom. Um, this will read well below 150 degrees. I've told you this lots of times. That oil is sitting right above the fire. So it's getting all of that heat. It's not dissipating it that much. So your egg will read a lot lower. So just use a thermo pen and move it around in the oil to see what the temperature is. You want somewhere at 180, 200, you don't want it to be burning, okay? Right, so let's grab our sprouts. I know you're all look, looking forward to these. I'll bring a few ingredients over. And I'll talk you through these before we um, cut the salmon up. One more bowl. So, um, many moons ago, in the summer I think it was, we did an Indian. So we did uh, onion barges. So one of the live cooks is onion barges. And this is very similar, apart from we've got, in the same way, we've got our gram flour, our binder. Oops, I am so messy. 
<laughs> we have um, shredded, they just, I just chopped them in half and then chopped them like I would an onion, shredded um, sprouts. So a few sprouts go in there. All we're going to do is bring this together. I've got one onion, so there is some onion in there. A bit of a normal uh, medium sized onion, chopped up. So you can just scrunch that in. A bit coming off the salmon. So we'll get that out of the way. Um, we have, in terms of herbs and spices, sorry, it's a bit breezy, so I've covered everything in cling again. Um, so in here we've got uh, some coriander leaf, we've got some ginger, we've got some uh, half a teaspoon of turmeric. Um, I've only gone half a teaspoon of chilli powder because our new chilli powder, as I think I said last week, is nuclear. Um, we've got some cumin seeds, so all of those will go in. Can we come back to one point in a minute? Um, someone's asked about uh, tips for lamb shanks. Okay, we'll come back. So do reminders, and the reminders. And then lastly, just to give it a little bit more heat, um, some bird's eye chilies just chopped up. So we'll get those in there. And now we need to make a thick batter. And I do remember talking about this. Um, so I've got uh, 150 millilitres of water. We'll get that in there. If we need more, we've got the tap just over there. But now we just need to mix this up. I'm actually going to move this salmon before I coat it in. Good idea. In batter. But um, I think I talked to you about the story of when I cycled through Kerala and we stopped one morning. Uh, it's like the penultimate day and we, one of the street food vendors um, was making barges. Uh, and that's what we were having for our mid-morning snack. On, uh, we were doing like 50 miles that day, about 40 degree heat. Um, so we stopped for barges for, for, for um, snack. Delicious. But what I do remember is that they were, you know, not runny. And they're not balls like our barges. They're not these big round, you know, tennis ball shaped things. They're smaller, more ragged. Rustic. More rustic. And they were absolutely delicious. So, um, somebody's probably made you buy loads of sprouts for the Christmas dinner and you definitely don't want to boil them and just eat them. So um, give this a whirl, give them a bit of flavour. Um, I think you saw a couple of weeks ago we did Endu Enduya um, uh, sprouts, sprouts. Uh, put it on the Instagram. So just uh, um, Bill Bill will be selling Enduya and I think his Sabressa, and I probably so so said that completely wrong, but I got a sample pack and I haven't opened it yet but he does another spicy sausage. That would work brilliantly. Mix it in and, and do that. So, right, let's get a little production run. We'll get a few of these out. Um, see if they hold together. If not, we'll put a bit more water in them. See how we go. Right, how are we doing on the other bits? Okay. What I will do is I'll check the oil. It's probably not gone down much, but we'll put in Oh, and 190. That's all right. Right. So I have, and we're going to do a sauce with these. So um, don't think it's just this. There is a sauce coming in a minute. So get some tablespoon size bits, lower them in, gently lower them in. Oh, that sizzle. Yeah, it's a little bit warm. And hopefully they'll stick together. I guess you could use cabbage, couldn't you? Yeah, you yeah, didn't want cabbage, to use... um, potato, grated potato would work. But what we're trying to do, get a few of these in here, hopefully they'll stick. If not, we'll have lots of little bits of it. Ooh, that one's falling apart. Might just put a tiny bit more water in here. Do you want to shut the lid for a minute? No, you're right. See, swapping sides make it the difficult. Let's <laughs> keep you on your toes. Alright, put one more in and then put those a couple of minutes. Uh, and then we're going to put a sauce. We're going to do a, um, a uh, uh, cranberry. So, uh, yeah, cranberry dipping sauce with a bit of chilli in there, so on. Should be nice. Let's have a look at our. 
Let's get the mess out of the way. Oh. Um, what I should have said is don't throw away the, the liquid that they were sitting in. We're going to use that to baste over them in a bit. I'm going to warm it up in this egg. So I'll chuck it on as well. Okay, so I'll do a few, few shout outs whilst you're doing that. Yeah. Uh, so Ooh, Steve, Barbecue Medic is on. Morning Steve, Sus thanks for all the good work. Sus Vaccinating like mad, no doubt. Uh, Sue Stoneman's on. Not giving people the vaccine, like I said on the other shout. Morning yeah. Sue. No, giving people the vaccine, not giving people the uh, virus. Yeah, virus, I know, that's what I said before, wasn't it? I've got um, a bit much corn flour on some of these, but what uh, I will do... Ross is on from Rome Catering. Morning Ross, how's it going? Uh, Isabel's on. Look up Ross, by the way. Rome Catering does some barbecue classes. Um, worked with me at Big Green Egg. Um, he's a proper chef. You know, unlike some of us around here who haven't got a clue. Just going to put a little bit of oil on these. Help them crisp up a bit. Yeah, Rome Catering. Look it up. He's just setting up. Uh, he set up this last year. Just got a new unit. Looks amazing. Uh, does a lot of catering. So if you want somebody to come and cook on your big green egg for you at a party, Ross is your man. That's not something we do. Nice. All right, let's create a little space. Tell me not to lift that up with a bare hand. Okay. <gasps> I'll have burnt these. Oh no, we're good. In fact, needs a bit more. Oh, they're looking good. Can you see these top? A bit like onion barges is Nigel on from Northern Ireland. No. Oh, Nigel would. Well, Matt, I don't know if he'd like sprouts, but he loves the onion barges. He's an absolute addict to those. All right, let's get a few of these out. Uh, so, um, Jane Bleakley's asked any barbecue classes in the northwest. So, so Mark. Thomason, so Mark Smoke Fine Foods, uh, who's normally on these cooks. I he, don't is. Know if he is this morning. He is this morning, yeah. So Mark has done my classes in the past, um, but definitely will not be doing any classes until it's safe to do so. Um, my my opinion is it's still not safe to give classes, even if they're. You know, I, I you know, I don't like the idea of giving classes, even if they're. Um, social distance it doesn't happen people don't social distance um so mark definitely won't do that he has to be very careful um we'll do some more but don't let me burn the next one okay um so mark has done classes he is based in uh newcastle so he may want to do some for you trying to get them a bit bigger might have used they're falling apart you could put a little bit more um bran flour in as a binder as well uh, so what are your suggestions for cooking lamb, sh lamb shanks lamb shanks um definitely a low and slow cook uh or a braise so you could put them in a in a dutch oven with some sort uh, of some uh, uh, uh sauce of some sort to, to to braise them but definitely low and slow cook um <laughs> Andrew's just told me I'm the getting, 10 minute time is up. getting pointed at, so yeah. <laughs> oh no, they need loads more. Another 10, Andy. Um, so I may as well do my hands while I'm here. Did um, you get that, Andrew? Another 10 minute timer, please. Thank you. No, I'm sure it said 20, I've forgotten. Even I have to go back and look at my recipes. Um, so yeah, braise them uh, would be great for lamb shanks. Uh, or, or you could do a low and slow on them. Nice bit of sticky, sticky, a mint, sticky mint sauce on the outside, maybe. Mix some honey right at the end with some mint and, and baste it on once they've cooked. That'd be quite nice. Bit of lemon over them. Definitely a bit of garlic in there. Corrine, um, uh, just in your note about the let's clue queue. If you order today, we'll try and get it out for you. Uh, we've got yeah. to do another yeah. run this afternoon. Yesterday so was the last day of shipping, uh, but. Um, uh, my Hermes, who we use, are doing really well at getting stuff there quickly. I know somebody this morning missed their delivery, but um, they are getting there, so it should get to you before Christmas. Um, yeah. So if you could do that sooner rather than later, that'd be great. Morning, Dean. Morning, Mandy. 
Morning, everybody. Those ones are breaking up a little bit more, but the look at these. These are going to be nice. I'm just going to check what I like that mini. What about me? <laughs> Chef treats. Oh. Thank you. Oh, good. Mmm. Yeah. Really good. Right. So, two minutes, I'll come back to those, but we'll go over here. Let's get rid of those manky sprouts that haven't been cooked. Don't worry, they won't go to waste. Just give this a little wipe down. Um, yeah. Um, how about um, if, if uh, Ross is still on from Rome Catering. Ross, what's your ideas on lamb shanks? Type some out. Ross is, you know, hey, hey, he's cooked with Daniel Clifford. I just got to go in there and take his egg out. Ross has actually cooked with him. So. Okay, so can we just do a recap of what we're doing? We've had some people yes. join midway through. Right, so we're doing three dishes. We have got some chicken wings and a really filthy egg now because I am messy, but some chicken wings, they're looking good. They're getting crispy. We're warming up a bit of sauce there. So these are Thai style chicken wings. Um, they're covered in corn flour to crisp them up. We have got some um, vegetable, um, some sprout pakoras. So um, sprouts, bit of onion, bit of chilies. Helena is stealing them again. So some sprout pakoras. We're going to do those with a sauce that I'm about to make. Mm. And then we've got some salmon baskets over here that are just baking. Um, and I'll show you those. Keep opening them, they're not going to bake. Right. So the sauce, really simple. We're just gonna make a chutney, basically. So I've got some ginger, uh, I've got some chopped mint uh, for these. I'm gonna use some cranberry sauce, and I need my spoon, which I have made a mess of. Let me just wash it. I won't do any more of those. We do own more than one spoon. <laughs> you know, life's been tough this year, but <laughs> we do own more than one spoon, it's just I didn't bring any out. Right, we're going to put in some cranberry sauce. So, you know, pretty much a whole jar. We're never going to eat with it. And then a bit of runny honey, about three tablespoons of runny honey. In true Nick style, I'm going to guess it. There we go. And juice of a lemon, half a lemon even. Give it a bit of zing and then we'll mix that up now this is a sauce i borrowed from elsewhere oh hello hello the roll is blowing hang on sorry people i just because the holly jumped out at me <laughs> um this sauce is i borrowed from elsewhere um they serve it cold with those pakoras i think we could probably heat it through i think it'd be nice mm. what are you going to heat it in in the egg. Yeah. What, just in that bowl? Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's nice. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, this could end in disaster. Let's move some of these out a little bit. If we come back to a cracked bowl and, and, and <laughs> it gets really smoky. Sauce all over the bowl. Sauce everywhere. Now, obviously, you could take more time with your... Um, uh, corn flour than I did. You can just grab a thermopen. All these can come out. Oh. They look lush. Um, so yeah, take a bit more time with your corn flour than I did. Mine's a bit cakey, but um, knock a bit more off your chicken wings. But it'll all end up pretty much the same. Um, with your oil at the end of this, I always get asked, what do we do? Um, just strain it, put it through a muslin when it's cold and put it back in the bottle. Right, this egg is now done with. So what I might do, because it's a relatively low temperature, I'm gonna take this wok out, I'll put it out the way so we don't fall over it. Get. I can reuse that one. There's enough heat in here 
fact, if I get a clay setter in there, that'd be even better. Okay, so someone's asked, what type of oil do you put in the wok? Uh, that was just uh, sunflower oil, just a light oil. So we'll pop that in, I'll just get a couple of grids and the grid tree. Whoop. We'll keep those warm in here. How about that? Right, those are coming out. It's everywhere. Yeah, it's a bit windy today. It's windy. Right, let's have a look at these. After all that, I still left the turn over there. Don't lift those uh, sauces out without your gloves. Yep. 95. We're nice and hot. Now, if you want them crispy, you could, crispier. You could go. Um, you could go. Uh, direct as well, but these are gonna, they are crispy. Because because chicken wings are so thin, you can go direct or indirect. Uh, just gives me a bit more control while I'm messing around like this if I'm going uh, indirect. Just check a couple more. Morning, Katrina. Morning, Coco. Yeah. Morning, Coco. Uh, have a look at her her Instagram, Coco Varney. Um, my God, that lady can bake. Well, she can do a lot, but her, her breads are just stunning. I think I've mentioned it before. Um, I must meet her one day because my sourdough is absolutely pathetic in comparison, so. Um, morning, Sarah. Morning, Simon. Right, let's give this a little stir. That's looking good. Made a mess anyway, haven't I, so. Right, so now we've got that. Um, this was the sauce we had. I've heated it up. Um, you should check it. 66. I might give it a little bit more. Just a couple of minutes more. Um, I'm going to put the jelly sauce in the other egg because it's cooler. I'll just keep it warm. Um, so we'll let this sauce just get going for a couple more minutes. These will be fine just sitting here. Let's have a look at our salmon baskets. Quite, not far off, you can just see them starting to crisp. I think if we took them out, they'd crisp up. Um, give those another two or three minutes. So in the meantime, I can cook, I can cut some of that salmon. Okay. So let's get our salmon back. So I don't know if Marcus has been on today, but um, Marcus Borden, um, he helped design this knife. It's an Io Shen knife. Um, so, Oh, I was going to talk to you about smoking, wasn't I? So we need, just need some thin slices of, uh, oops, of our smoked salmon. So this, uh, we've told you how to cure it. So then you've got to smoke it. So the best way of smoking it is a process called cold smoking, um, where you, uh, you're not trying to cook this. This has never been cooked. This is raw cured salmon. Um, but you're trying to cold smoke it um, so you're putting smoke onto it while it's cold and there's a device to do it I'll show you that that's one in a box it's called a Pro-Q cold smoke generator and that's what it oops that's what it looks like um, it's particularly dirty but you put sawdust in here you put a tea light under at the end it starts it burning and this will smolder then for 10 hours and all I do is put it in the bottom of my egg like that. Once it's smouldering, blow out the tea light, put a rack in and put your salmon in there. Close the lid, open the top a tiny bit, open the bottom a little bit, and what will happen is the smoke will go through it and you'll have beautiful smoked salmon. Do you want to check that sauce? Yeah. Another minute. Just want it to go above 74, which is uh, when chicken is cooked. Right. slices this is just delicious you've got to try this um, everybody in our family absolutely loves this hence you saw probably saw I did five sides the other day this is a sea trout oh time is up so I think um, right baskets I think yep hopefully I haven't got any more procurers on right 
Hang on a sec, let me just uh, keep, keep the camera lady happy. <laughs> Thank you. Mm, nice. Right. They're good. Well done, chef. <laughs> Helena normally makes me, it's not me. You can do these in the oven, you can do them the day before and mm. then you can reheat them for five yep. minutes in the oven. Yep. So, right, let's, uh, let's, let's do something a bit strange. Let's uh, plate up on, on here. So, grab the baskets. Look at your matches, make your sauce. Yeah. Let those cool down so they can cool nicely on there. Um, I'll get rid of the tray. I'll go and grab my ingredients. We're going to make a very quick sort. Salmon looks lush. Of course. Uh, let's put it down here. You're right, Dean. Yeah. So, uh, we're going to make a quick sauce for salmon. I'll just move that out of the way. Put it on the end board here. Um, so, into a bowl we have some mayonnaise. Third of a cup. You can tell who makes this, can't you? <laughs> She's getting chopsy now. She hasn't brought a spoon. Oh, she has brought a spoon. Third of a cup of mayonnaise. Now I'm getting chopsy. Mm -hmm. We have a big dollop of horseradish. Three teaspoons. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> yep. Give that a good stir in. We have a lemon. You want the whole lemon? As you were. <laughs> As I, I just do it to taste. Yeah, we're gonna go for half. So half a lemon. Teaspoon of white wine vinegar. Yeah. Yes, miss. I did bring you out a teaspoon. <laughs> you won't use it, will you? I'd measure it, Nick will guess. Teaspoon of white wine vinegar. And we've got some dill here, so we will just what did I chop with that knife? Uh this makes salmon, no, I don't know. I don't think I have, just the lemon. Oh yeah. Right, bit of dill, so we'll get that chopped up. Morning, Andrew. Which Andrew is oh, Lawrence. Oh, good Sorry. morning, Andrew. Good afternoon. No, it's very early for you, isn't it? Barbados. I do believe he's in Barbados. That's just rude. Yeah, I thought, you know, his brother last week joined us, or said he was going to join us, but I don't think he actually did from Jamaica, and now he's in Barbados this week. That family, they know how to live. Right. So. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Uh, right, we'll take some of our salmon. So we're gonna drape it into our baskets. This is a family favorite. So get them in. You can go mad with the amount of salmon you put in there if you want. Just get them in. You can't eat them all, Helena, because I need to take photos of them afterwards. Because <laughs> I don't think we've ever taken photos of these. Got the recipe. Steve, the oh, timers are up. Yeah, what, what? we're fine. We'll go and grab. Steve the barbecue medic says cheeky pixie's just been on to Coco Varney's Insta. Looks like that third egg may be sooner here rather than later. Just give us a shout, Steve. <laughs> Sorry, but Coco's baking is. I mean, cheeky pixie, another one to follow on Insta. Her baking is awesome, but Coco. No, I'm not saying I'm not, but Coco. Her baking is incredible. Right. So we have salmon in our baskets. Looking good. Get that sauce. Uh, oven gloves here. Oven gloves. Got our wings. Oh yeah, it's definitely boiling now. We'll get that over over our wings. Uh, I'll take that out. Is it um sorry, is there time to smoke a side of salmon before Christmas? Uh, Yes and no. Um, yes and no. Yes, you, you could cure it today and then you could smoke it tomorrow if you've got a smoker. 
and then it could sit. Ideally, you want to leave it for a week, but two days is fine. So, um, to cure, just to cure. So, right, I'm going to take some of these wings. So, these wings, um, sriracha sauce, fish sauce, just putting them on this uh, slather board from Big Green Egg. Should put these on my website. I've got some in stock. Um, I'm not going to do it, I won't put all of them on. But we'll get some of those on. Right, get those out of the way. Let's go with those. I we'll have some peanuts, some mint, and some chilies. So just bear with me one second. Um, is just... the smoked salmon information on the website? Yes, definitely. Um, yeah, if you look on the fish section, there's smoked salmon up there. Uh, lots of people used it, but it's really, really easy. Right, we're going to take some mint leaves. This is going to be a little bit interesting in the wind. Wind's just picked up. So I'm going to get these mint, just chop it nice and fine while the gusts aren't coming through. That'll do me. So we're going to get some mint leaves all over those and all over the table and the patio and Ah, we'll do. We are going to get some peanuts. So all I've done, salted peanuts, um, just chop them up. So these are, you know, just in standard salted peanuts. We are going to get some chili. A bit of red chili to go on there. Look at those bad boys. So Coco's just asked if anyone um, on the live show has tried to order whole salmon straight from Scotland. We certainly haven't, uh, Coco. We tend to pick it up um, yeah. from a supermarket um, just because they tend to have them on offer at this time of year. Come um, back from the sauce. Barbecue Bill might be a good one to talk to about that. He has ordered lots of fish before. Yeah, he tends to use um, wing, which are down in uh, the Cornish fishmonger. Um, down in, uh, the down in, oh, come on, we go there. We've actually visited to. Oh, Newquay. Down near Newquay, but they're just outside. You know, uh, where St Anne's Cottage uh, is. Oh, um. Anyway, but yeah, look up the Cornish fishmonger or wing, that's, uh, but that's Cornish. Last one. Sauce. Uh, so someone has said um, our recipe says use PDV salt. Can you use ordinary table salt? Yes, you can. PDV salt is um, uh, pure dried vacuum. Uh, pure dried vacuum, I think it stands for. Um, it's just no anti-caking agents in it. Uh, the only difference is uh, you get anti-caking agents in your table salt, but that's it. Yeah, it's fine. I'm just going to put this over the top because I think it'll look pretty. Yeah, Mark from Smoke Fine Food has also said ordinary salt's grand yeah. as well. Quick film everywhere. But how does that lot look? So we have got. We've got Thai style chicken wings with mint and chili and peanuts over the top. We've got sprout pakoras with a um, uh, cranberry chutney and we have our smoked salmon baskets um, with a horseradish mayonnaise. Okay, so question on the um, curing again. Yep. Uh, could you use rock salt? Uh, yeah, but I grind it down. Any salt will work fine. All you're doing is using the salt to draw the moisture out, but grind it down um, so that it's smaller parts and it will it'll work better. I'm just going to take one of these just so they can, oh, you're not just... allowed one top because No, I know, I realise um, Because that. I need to take photos, but I just wanted you to, <laughs> just, just to hear, you know I'm not going to tell you it's all around your lips <laughs> Oh, I love these <laughs> Superb Squeeze a lemon over the top as yeah, well, Yeah, squeeze nice. a lemon, these are lemony because of the Okay Oh Mmm Right Sorry. Oh, rude. 
How are we doing over here? We've got everything off. Right, we're good. So, we'll take some photos of these. We'll put the recipes up. Should eat one of these, shouldn't I? Should eat one of each, just so you know. Yeah, Andres has made a very good point on our behalf. So, uh, oh. Merry Christmas to you all. And thank mm. you for so much for following and supporting us this year. Mm. Um, we are obviously mm. not going to be doing one next Saturday, but we're possibly- Not unless you all, no. <laughs> um, but uh, we are definitely thinking about doing one on what will be the 2nd of January. So if right. you're, but it'd be kind of nice to know if we're gonna have yeah, a few people. If you people. want us to do one on the second of January, in the snow and the rain <laughs> and the wind, um, we're up for it. Um, yeah, oh, they they are oh they they're spicy. They're lovely. And then we've got the gil pakoras. Let me just do a little bit of pakora that's got a bit of cranberry on it. They're pretty special too. Yeah. Anyway, you have to take my word for it or make them. Can we can we um, flip the camera and then say happy Christmas to everyone? Sorry? Happy Christmas, everybody. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I said, could we flip the camera oh, both of us? Yeah, yeah, I'll do that in a minute. Um, so we still, we think we can still ship a few things. We've got the Pro Q's in stock. We've got the, um, uh, the Let's Q in stock. We don't have, we've got rubs in stock. We don't have um, any large aprons. We've got extra large. Big Green Egg have stopped now for Christmas, so there'll be nothing coming from them until, uh, well, they'll still be shipping stuff, but you can't order anything and get it before Christmas, um, unfortunately. What else did I have to tell you all? Yeah, I think if people do want the Let's Cues, they really need to get their orders in this yeah. weekend, so. Um... Let's grab this. Let's grab that one. Oh, that was a lovely picture of the fence, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, so thank you very much for supporting us. If there's any uh, questions, we're around all week. Uh, I'm, I'll say that, I'm not, I'm not around on Wednesday. I'm hopefully playing golf. Um, but I am around sort of for the rest of the week and we'll be shipping stuff. So uh, hopefully we will see you all, well, hear from you. And yeah, um, if you could, and you've, if you've bought something from us and you love it, if you could do a review on the website or on Google about our business, that would be amazing. Um, it makes a massive difference. You know, we are only tiny. Um, so yeah, that, that would be a lovely Christmas present to us. Um, but otherwise, yeah, we hope you all have a fabulous Christmas, no, whatever you're doing. Share all your photos. Um, hopefully all your turkeys turn out amazingly on the egg. Um, or, or whatever else you're doing we're going to do um, we haven't got a turkey yet and I went to buy one yesterday and they sold out so uh, we're going to do well we've definitely got a picanha <laughs> so one of our favourites roast uh, reverse seared picanha so we're definitely doing that um, but we'll see what else happens so no biggie so yeah happy Christmas to you all and we will see you all on the second if you're up for it alright yeah, perfect. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Take care.